Most people nowadays know the Cordage Commerce Center as the up-and-coming place for businesses on the north side of Plymouth. What many may not realize is that Cordage Park has a rich history as the industrial powerhouse for the area for the better part of two centuries. In fact, if you go inside, there's an actual museum to the park's history. So that's what we did, and we spoke with the museum's curator. Plymouth Cordage became, reached its high point in the around the First World War when they were employed just under 2,000 people when the whole town had 12,000 people, men, women, and children. So it was a significant industry in the town, which was big on industry anyways, because they had shoe factories, tack factories, cloth factories, many factories, but Plymouth Cordage was the biggest. In fact, it was the world's largest rope manufacturer for years and years, up until its demise. The artifacts that are around in the in the two buildings, mainly this building, mill number one and number three, which is next door, were acquired over the years. Some of them never left the building. There's a drill press, there's a lathe, there's a number of things that are in the buildings. Uh, one of the biggest things we have are, are two uh, compressed air locomotives. They were part of a fleet of eight locomotives and 40 flat cars that ran around the pack with almost five miles of track. They went in and out of all the buildings. They had to run on compressed air because no spark could happen without an explosion in the building because of so much fiber in the air. So it was kind of a unique design, one of a few that are left. We found two of them up in New Hampshire and did a fundraising project and got them back at Cordage. Uh, also in the hallways are a number of pictures that uh, people go around and realize that that was their grandfather, great uncle, whatever, and kind of gives them a, a feeling of continuity. The biggest problem we have is that we're only open on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays from noon to four. So a lot of people are in here during the week, but they don't, the museum isn't open typically. Uh, everything we do is volunteer. We have no funding from anybody. So I'm in between projects right now, and when I'm not doing anything, I don't leave the door open and people walk in, and they're always, well, I went by because I had to go to the doctors or whatever, and, but you're always closed. I said, well, come in and volunteer, we'll be open. But, you know, that doesn't happen too often. Uh, but there is a good response. 